morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids. Technically, for the second time. Uh, yeah. uh, I hit the go live button, but I obviously didn't hit it correctly. And what happens is, for those of you who don't know, on a Mac computer, if you're working on one screen and you go over the other, you have to click twice to activate the screen. And I didn't click twice. I clicked it once on the go live button. We went what we thought was live. And then I noticed that something in the chat. And then I looked up and I go, how come there's no viewers? And I look over to the right and it says, go live I'm like ah oh, we were we had some good content for you we too. were 26 minutes into the show <laughs> oh i'm so sorry we started at like 703 <laughs> i'm so sorry i apologize <laughs> I, I do need another coffee that was my first one my mental health is doing great now i woke up feeling terrible miss lola <laughs> snuggled up to me and had a cuddle i feel great Let's get on with the show. I'm going to grab a coffee, sir. <laughs> just jump right in. I need a coffee. And, and we can go till 8 o'clock today before I have to leave to go to my, my day job. But uh, uh, I am so sorry. I feel like an idiot. Uh, so, kids, I'm going to have to speed through this because yeah. <laughs> I was originally going with it with an hour. But I think I might be able to get it done for half an hour for you. Okay. Uh, welcome to episode number 413 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on Cry a media network. I am your host, the eager beaver pronouns, he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A. And yes, thanking you so much, as Ms. Shadika says, we are so dedicated to you guys that we hung out in the chat for 26 minutes, even without the show, and you were chatting and doing a wonderful job, kids and cups. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> I'm your host, the Eager Beaver pronouns. He, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A. And as you heard with me is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly, who's in good mental health, as am I. A big thank you goes to our podcast, founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Misfy Mysteries, and CanadianTarot.com. The Misfy Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, of course. Um, today, uh, we've, there's a lot of stuff going on, um, but we got sidetracked um, by one particular story. As you know, kids and cubs, I try to often say in um, when we do our show that if you're a communications person or if you're a member of the media, um, your goal is to not make yourself the story, right? You should try as much as possible to not be the story. But there comes times when, well, there are other people that want to drag you in and make you the story. And that happened to us yesterday. Now, when I say us, I don't mean Mr. Grizzly and I specifically. Um, or this particular show, but us, when I'm talking about our network, Cryer Media. Um, if you are a fan of the network and you're not just watching our show and you consume uh, much of our Cryer other content, content or some of our other content, um, you will have noticed that there is a story about a gentleman, and I use the term loosely, from the mm -hmm. UK who came to Canada and got himself arrested. Now, he got himself arrested because there was an outstanding immigration warrant on him. This person is not the first time that he does some things that are really funny with immigration because, well, back in, I think, 2012 or 2013 it was, 
um, he entered the United States illegally on someone else's passport. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's kind of greasy. And as you mentioned, when we thought we were doing the show, Mr. Grizzly, that's something that our good friends in the United States really don't take kindly to. No, they do not. Yes. So he got sentenced to jail for that. And um, yesterday he was arrested in Canada. And now you're figuring, well, what's this guy doing in Canada? Right? I mean, he's got a criminal record for one. How did he land here? Two. And... I'm pretty sure that he knew that he had an outstanding warrant mm-hmm. for immigration purposes. And I'm pretty sure, well, well, maybe not sure that he knew that Canada had an extradition treaty Agreed. with the United States, but I mean, it's really not a stretch. Um, Let's just uh, to figure it out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So that was a terrible joke. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Grizzly, uh, the first uh, tweet that I sent you, uh, is the one of him getting arrested and let's enjoy this Um, and um, this was posted at two something in the morning on Jan on June 25th. Now this must have happened some point the day before Mm -hmm. uh, because it's not that light out at two 38 in the morning. (laughs) No, and I think he's outside a shopping center. It looks like he's outside of a grocery chain. Yeah. A big national grocer who also owns a drugstore. That's what it looks like. I don't know, though. Here we go. Let's have a look at this. Outstanding immigration warrant. We'll talk about it in the vehicle, okay? <laughs> How's your luck, hey? You've got one night in. What about my stuff? What about my stuff? My we'll passport. Stuff. Absolutely insane, yeah. Get me a lawyer. Can you not tell me what I'm under arrest for? You're under arrest for having an outstanding I'm warrant. Arrest. I'm happy to provide you with all I'm of your rights. Yeah, for an outstanding immigration warrant. Would you jump in there, please? Tommy. Yeah. Love you, buddy. Can I put these in the Yeah. Yeah, you got your feet in there. Thank you. So, oi. Fuck Justin Trudeau. Okay. <laughs> Good. Can, can, you put, can, you put can you put these in front of me? What is the charge? Free yeah, speech. Why not? What would you be in there for? Why can't I put them in front of me? I'm not trying to sit down. Tommy, did they tell you what yeah, you need to sit down? Okay, so I've got an outstanding warrant. Okay, thank you. I can't sit I can't sit down with my hands, come on. Calgary's finest. Okay, just step back, please. Calgary's finest. Thou shalt not speak against. Where where can I go to, to help him uh, get a lawyer and get bail? Oh, that's no, relevant. That's which police? Which police? Of course, he's there. APU. Could be going downtown to APU. Which precinct? APU which downtown. Look at him knocking on the window as if he's entitled to an answer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hotel. It's a straight up fucking kidnapping, apparently. Mm, yeah. He was arrested on an immigration warrant. Yes. All right. So he was clearly with the rebel people. This was there. Now, as we know, rebel does have a tendency of loving to make itself the news uh, by usually it's its reporters that are there. Uh, recently, we saw some uh, Alexandre Lavoie at a protest in Montreal uh, trying to film some uh, um, pro-Palestinian uh, protesters. And, uh, well, they didn't want her here. They were saying, uh, Rebel News Decalis. This is Rebel News, get out of here. And, uh, you know, they tried to, to spray her with stuff and whatnot, which clearly, you know, is not okay. Um, but... Uh, unsurprising that nobody wants you around. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're wondering what Ezra Levant is doing there, uh, Mr. Grizzly, uh, let's show uh, the other images. Remember uh, about a week ago or a little more than a week ago, there was a truck going through the streets of Toronto, a video truck with video screens on the side, uh, showing some 
other anti-Islamic messages. To say the least. And, well, it seems that that was reported and it concerned the police enough that they opened an investigation. And before the investigation could get too far, Ezra Levant lifted up his hand and said, Hey, that's us. We did that. Well, it would seem, word on the tweet is, that Mr. Robinson raised the funds for that truck. Yes, indeed. So, um, now we know that they have a link. Mm -hmm. And now we know for sure that they have a link because Ezra was right there and Ezra wants to get him a lawyer, of course. That guy also, uh, when he got arrested, you see that he was actually surprised that he was arrested. Uh, notice him saying, uh, I'll walk on my own, but then, you know, needs to be pushed, two mm -hmm. steps and pushed. And notice that he was wearing uh, the 2024 version of the standard issue skin hat outfit. Mm -hmm. This uh, wasn't a short sleeve polo. This time it was long sleeve polo, but they have white marks down on the collar and he was wearing the really, really tight jeans with the holes in it, not acid mm -hmm. wash like in the 80s. So maybe the modern updated version of it. Um, and that's not an accident because this guy apparently has a track record as long as an NBA player basketball, NBA basketball player's arm. Oh, yes. And it goes back down to 2005. Now, and also, Mr. Grizzly, if you would uh, share this screen, it seems that, um, well, there may have been something a little organized because uh, Rebel News had uh, the free Tommy Robinson t-shirts out right now. Well, Already. so let, let, let's let, let's address that for a second, though, because I keep hearing that all the time. This was planned. This was planned. They printed merch. It's like, hmm. I could make that in three seconds true, and send it to a, a print on demand company. So, I mean, maybe they had it planned, but to say they did is that's a serious accusation that I, I don't, I don't, I don't, it doesn't sit comfortably with me because you can go to a print on demand and submit a design and have it up online, ready to go in like 30 seconds. You can come up with a graphic, put it on and 30 seconds later, it's ready for to be sold. So, I, I have a difficult time with that statement because it doesn't necessarily ring absolutely true with me. So that's my, and again, do I like rebel? No, I fucking hate them. They're horrible human being. Ezra Levant is a demon who should be, Oh, I don't know, arrested maybe for some of the shit, for some of the harm he's caused Canadians, but facts matter. Truth is important. And to say that they had that printed and ready to go, it doesn't sit well with me because I don't know that to be true. Yeah. Now, we don't know that to be true, but we do have a reason to suspect it is. Yes. Because appearing in a newspaper in the UK, hopenothate.org.uk, it seems that um, this may have been part of the plan all along, including the arrest. Now, the call here is coming from inside the house. Canadian far-right activist Bethan Nodwell, one of the organizers of the so-called Freedom Convoy, has made some statements for this publication. Now, it seems that the manner in which he got um, arrested is that people from the Canadian Anti-Hate Network, which... Um, basically called, wrote a letter to public safety and immigration refugees and citizenship, pointing out that Robinson was ineligible to enter Canada because of his criminal record and urging that he be removed from the country. And he was arrested shortly after. Mm -hmm. and now, as part of his arrest, he was made to surrender his passport and told that he must stay in southern Alberta until the matter is resolved. Unfortunately for him, it appears that uh, he had some planned speaking events in Edmonton and in Toronto. Um, he's not supposed to be in the country, and it seems that he was here for work and to make some money. On a, on a, on a visitor's visa. Yes. A, on, a tourist visa, sorry. Yes. 
So, and it seems that this might have been something also that was organized by Ezra Levant and Rebel, because according to Bethan Nodwell, uh, it seems that while he was intoxicated, because mm -hmm. that Lennon arrived in Canada, or Tommy Robinson arrived in Canada, and immediately started to party. Uh, but apparently, while he was intoxicated, he let slip that he was aware that he would be arrested and also put in place to raise money to make up for the lack of ticket sales for his speaking tour. The tour was organized by former employer, his former employer, Rebel Media, which he himself apparently is caught on tape saying that he's worked for them for two years. And it was also due to meet and record a podcast with, of course, Jordan Peterson. Big oh, shocker there. It's with the best people. Um, yeah, so it seems that the ticket sales were not going very well, according to Nodwell, uh, who claims that Lennon's arrest was somehow part of a plan to raise money in light of embarrassingly poor ticket sales for his tour. Quote, while we were coming back into the hotel, he, Tommy, he's like, right, the tour's over. We've sold no tickets. I think they sold like 60 tickets. Mm. This of the sales required to make the $80,000 Nodwell claims they aimed to make from the tour. She then explains how they plan to make up the shortfall. Quote, I'm going to Calgary. I'm going to get nicked and then the tour is over, said Lennon, according to Nodwell. And then when I saw the arrest last night, I was like, that's what he meant. Right. Oh, and then the Save Tommy thing was out. They had a domain name. They had it ready to go. I'm like, that's how you make your 80,000 folks right there. Yeah. She finished her explanation of events by encouraging people not to donate to Lennon's fundraiser and questions his off-quoted dedication to protected women. Quote, close up your wallet. You are being had. Tommy, if you are doing drugs and you are doing drugs with prostitutes, you're not defending women who runs these brothels. You're exploiting women and you're supposed to be out there defending our white girls. From Rotherham? That was a line for me. You're actually betraying us. So, people from the right are attacking who him. are uh, upset at him because he went women from the right because he went to a brothel mm -hmm. where he was doing drugs with prostitutes instead of defending our white girls yeah from rotherham um had, took objection now it seems that that is indeed according again to nodwell who clearly might have a vested interest in wanting to spread this information uh, although there is a picture of uh, people together with, I mean, there's a picture of him with Beth and Nodwell in this article. Um, Nodwell claims that Lennon arranged for a group to go for a curry at a restaurant owned by the cousin of someone he knows in the UK, where things reportedly got out of hand soon after their arrival. Quote, that's when somebody broke out the cocaine, Nodwell said on a live stream. Then out came the vodka, Cokes. And the next thing you know, a dragon had been unleashed in this man. He went missing from the hotel and people were panicking. Nodwell then claims to have contacted the restaurant owner and purveyor of the drugs who provided them with the number of a massage parlor where Lennon was supposedly hiding out. However, most explosively, Nodwell claims that Lennon's arrest was somehow, well, anyway, part of the plan. There you go. So, um, yes, apparently he came to town uh had dinner with some friends um got coked up so much that the dragon had been unleashed um then there was vodka and then he went to a massage parlor somewhere between being arrested we hope it was between being arrested we hope it didn't happen after um Tommy Robinson also had time for a chat with an MPP from Ontario. Said MPP is Goldie Gamari. She is a member, I believe, of Doug Ford's party, the Progressive Conservative Party of Ontario, and um, she had a meeting with him that she posted pictures of on her social media feed. Those images have since 
disappeared mm. from her feed. Funny. Goldie Gamari also happens to be the chair of the Standing Committee on Justice Policy. She is the MPP for Carlton, which is the same electoral district as Pierre Polyev. Not sure if it's the same boundaries, because sometimes they're different provincially <laughs> than federally, but same region. Um, if you look at his rap sheet, goes all the way back to 2005, you will find things um, like stalking on his, thing, on his well, rap sheet. Uh, 20, 2005, sentenced 12 months in prison for assaulting an off-duty police officer. 2011, convicted of using threatening, abusive, and insulting behavior during a football brawl. Used, received 12 months community rehabilitation order and a three-year ban from football matches. 2013, jailed for 10 months using a false passport to enter the United States, which we talked about. 2014, sentenced 18 months in prison for mortgage fraud amounting to 160,000 pounds. 2018, jailed for 13 months for contempt of court after live streaming video outside a criminal trial. The sentence was quashed on procedural grounds, but he was retried and given a nine month sentence in 2019. Served multiple prison terms between 2005 and 2019 for various offenses. 2014, sentenced 18 months in prison for mortgage fraud amounting, to, again, 160, that, that's a repeat there. Um, so, Oh, and in 21, 2021, he was found to have libeled a 15-year-old Syrian refugee in order to pay $100,000 plus legal costs. He has been accused of missing, misusing donations from supporters. Former employees have questioned what happened to the money and raised to support him, though Robinson denies these claims. So a quick little search through the Googler. What brought his name? So apparently she took a meeting with him because, um, well, Goldie stands against the RG, IRGC. And Robinson, a noted um, Islamophobe, mm -hmm. also does. So they were having a meeting to talk about that, apparently, she says. So uh, apparently, like everybody else, we're supposed to guess that. And, and here's the thing, especially after the incident in the House of Commons with the person everybody thought was a war hero and turns out may have been a war criminal, mm -hmm. you would think that and after Daniel Smith's phone call with Arthur Pawlowski and Candace Bergen dining with convoyers and PP providing, well, being Skippy the dishes to convoyers for bringing them Tim Hortons and not reading the T-shirt and constantly being caught in pictures with Diagalon people and walking into the trailer of Diagalon fans, you would think by now it would be standard procedure that if somebody's asking you for a meeting, you will insert their name in the Googler for a little bit to see if there's something that tells you maybe I should not accept this meeting. But apparently she did not do that. Apparently, we are to believe. Apparently. So she took a meeting for him, uh, from him. And uh, this guy also uh, likes to pose as a defender of children. Uh, defender of yeah. children from uh, pedophiles. Uh, um, his his uh, yeah. defense league that he's with uh, has no fewer than 10 actually known convicted. pedophiles convicted yes. and all that stuff that he has defended. Uh, he has a problem with pedophiles if they're Muslim, but not if they're white. Apparently. Apparently. I mean, his track record proves that, yes. right? And, and this is all in the news. So apparently mm -hmm. she met with the guy who defends pedophiles mm -hmm. as well, so long as they're white, but he's against the RGC. He doesn't like Islam people. So it's okay to take that meeting apparently. Now, it seems that Goldie and Tommy uh, share a love of spreading hate against people who observe the religion of Islam because uh, both the Canadian Muslim Public Affairs Council and the National Council of Canadian Muslims have denounced her in mm -hmm. the past uh, for saying things like, for example, uh, any Muslim saying Alu Akbar is basically uh, calling for terrorism to happen. But that's not what that means. No, that's not. <laughs> But apparently she made statements like that. And apparently uh, Doug Ford had the opportunity to handle her back then and decided to do nothing. Of course. Um, now, we don't know if Goldie scheduled her meeting with Robinson before or after his arrest. Didn't she run for the mayor of Toronto a couple years back? I'm not sure about that. I'd have to check on that. Okay. Um, so I'm hoping that her meeting him with him was scheduled 
before he was arrested rather than after. Mm -hmm. But even though a video of him being arrested was posted at 2.38 a.m. on June 25th, um, Goldie, for some reason, seemed to be up at 2.59 in the morning. Mm. 21 minutes after his arrest. Was she in a different time zone? Uh, she might have been, yes. Um, but I think uh, on uh, Twitter, all uh, all the timestamps appear in the time zone that you are in. Oh, okay. For consistently, I think they're modified. Um, so um, if you put this up, uh, Mr. Grizzly, um, apparently she was given Rebel News a bit of a hand here. So let me get this straight. Canada arrests Tommy Robinson, but allows this IRGC terrorist supporter who constantly breaches his bail obligations to dress up in Islamic regime clothes and threaten politicians like me with zero consequences? Can somebody explain this double standard? I'm confused. Well, it's simple. One has an arrest warrant. <laughs> yes. If the other guy doesn't have an arrest warrant, you can't just arrest him. Yes. Now, number one, an MP's job, an MPP's job, is very, very, very busy. Why is she up at 3 o'clock in the morning? Maybe she's working. I don't know. Okay. Two, he's been arrested. Mm -hmm. You think that would prompt you to enter his name into the old Googler? Considering that, you know, you know he has an outstanding warrant. Yeah. And, you know, you would put his name in there and... um See, but no, apparently she ran to his defense. Now, she claims now that she had no idea of his past. And she deleted tweets about the meeting, which, uh, well, of course, the uh, Ontario NDP got a screen cap of that, though. Oh, of course. Do you have if it? If you put it up there. Um, there we are. So there, there they are. Mm-hmm. So, so apparently this kind of tweet has disappeared from her feed, but her tweet uh, asking why it is that he got arrested in the RGC is still up mm -hmm. as the raise of money for him. Of course they are. It's all her tweet it's all positioning him as a victim is still up, even though she says, I didn't know about it in order to absolve herself and try to make it go away. But she's still championing him by not taking down the other tweet as well. I have a 21-second 21, 21 clip here for you, sir. Okay. Of uh, somebody from The Rebel interviewing a woman on the street about Tommy Robinson. I don't know if you've seen this. I'm going to caution people that there is a, a British colloquial, colloquialism, colloqu oh, you know, I can't even say the word. Colloquialism. Right Thank you. Colloquialism. Used in this, in, in this uh, statement from this random woman on the street, so please don't be offended, because in the UK, this is common vernacular. Have you heard anything about Tommy Robinson running for MEP in the region? Yeah, he's a con. <laughs> and why, why is that? <laughs> you know why, but she won't be asking. <laughs> That's why I'm asking. Can you give me, why, why do you think that? He's racist, he's Islamophobic, and he's a con. And can you, have you heard anything about Tommy Robinson? Okay. <laughs> so like, apparently she knew about him. Yeah, and, and this was on the 25th of June, apparently. So, yeah, it's, this is the UK. They know all about him. They know who this guy is. They know what yeah. kind of a, a, a human scum he is. All right. So confused? Yeah. She, she's definitely confused. Um, now... Even though she's trying to absolve herself, but still championing his cause, um, in her statement, she says, I condemn all forms of Islamophobia and anti-Semitism. Hate has no place in Ontario. I was not aware of Mr. Robinson's history prior to our meeting. I chose to meet with him because I am Iranian-Canadian immigrant who has been speaking out on behalf of human rights violations by the Islamic regime in Iran against Iranians in Iran and their attempts to spy and threaten Iranians in Canada. He wanted to discuss the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, which was recently listed as a terrorist entity in Canada. We discussed IRGC terrorists, its impact in Canada, and the six-year effort of the Iranian-Canadian diaspora to put the IRGC on the Canadian terrorists. I hope that clarifies. No, it does not, because you will know 
notice that in that tweet, she does not denounce him nor express any regret for having met him. She just says, hmm. I didn't know about his past. Yeah. But he calls her and says, apparently, I want to talk to you about the IRGC. And she says, great, I am anti-IRGC. Let's chat. Weren't they finally labeled a terrorist what? organization? Yes, they were. <laughs> they were finally by the current government mm -hmm. after the current government asked the conservatives to do this for the first time way back in 2009. Right. 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. Or Sorry, not 16, but yeah, 15 years ago. 15 years ago. 15 years ago. Not six, as she claims. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, she doesn't denounce him. She doesn't express regret for meeting him. And after saying, I was not aware of Mr. Robinson's history, she then goes on to justify having the meeting with him. Because I guess in Goldie Gamari's world, if you just call her up and say, hey, I don't like the IRGC, let's meet. She says, okay, doesn't look into who you are. And apparently we'll just assume that anybody who wants to talk about an RG, IRGC is an authority on the subject. He's a white supremacist, Nazi loving, white pedophilia defending person who enters the United yeah. States on someone else's passport who has a rap sheet that goes back to 2005 and has spent most of his last 20 years, well, the most has spent a lot of time in the last, since 2005, in prison. Wouldn't be my first choice to talk about how we help women in Iran. It doesn't clarify a damn thing, Goldie. Now, Goldie herself um, is a bit interesting because according to her Wikipedia, quote, Gamari received her law license in 2013 but had eight administrative suspensions between June 27th and July 2019 for issues such as failure to pay her annual fee or file her annual report. And this was before she became an MPP. Mm -hmm. And she got her nomination paper signed. For this. In fact, she had her license to practice, shades of Trump lawyers, suspended <laughs> for having, quote, engaged in professional misconduct and or conduct on becoming a licensee. And there's a, if you go to her Wikipedia, apparently she accused of people that she didn't agree with or didn't like with or got into bad, bad business relations with of uh, being terrorists, even though she had no information of the sort. So um, just like these white people, uh, these, these Tommy Robinsons call everybody that doesn't agree with them a pedophile. Uh, she calls everybody that doesn't agree with them a terrorist. And she's lost her license. Yeah. Uh, this person doesn't clearly possess the discernment, honesty, mastery of self attention to detail or the emotional and intellectual temperament to be representing anyone and has proven it over years. She's a liability, and Ford must remove her from caucus and the fact that he has not done a thing yet that he needs to be asked. Yeah. Well, he's on vacation. the track record though. of these two people. He's on vacation for 19 weeks. So, but yeah. come on. Come on. I know. They're on vacation for 19 weeks, and he managed to sneak King of Sermon, Surma in to do a press conference about the Ontario oh, Science yeah. Center that nobody else did. But he can get off his duff. He knows this is going on. Of course he does. And especially she should be removed as the chair of the Justice Committee since she has met with and has gone to bat for a career criminal. But this one's a layup. Just, didn't he just make a racist statement in front of Olivia Chow and the Prime Minister about yep. a week or two ago? Yes, so he did. Maybe he's not doing anything because he's kind of in league. Merely a suggestion, speculation on my part, pure conjecture. There's no proof to support that. But he made yep. a racist statement about immigration. He's in the country illegally. He allegedly consumed drugs while he was here, went to a massage parlor, and got arrested. Yeah. She still has the tweet on her feed. Doug Ford has not removed her from caucus, and especially as chair of the Justice Committee. Mm -hmm. This is a problem. Big problem. And the reason why I mentioned that we are the story is because this guy apparently went, did a two-second search Literally did a two-second search and found the stories about Dean, to which he's already admitted and talked about all the time, mm -hmm. having made jokes mm -hmm. about a rapist and having said that Justin Bieber, when he was 13, was a pillow biter. Stuff that Dean has had copped up to, whatnot, and you know, said, well, he lost his job before that. Well, oh, well, Dean's a pervert. He's a pedo. Took me two seconds to figure out what kind of person you are, Dean. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but that was only, of course, after Dean's tweet got 1.3 million views. And then he finally saw it and said, Hey, who's this guy who's getting all these views talking about me <laughs> then? So yes. And apparently, well, uh, now apparently Cryer is now has uh, a defamation suit in the works against rebel. Good. So hence, uh, there'll probably be a lot going on. You probably, if you're following uh, Cryer stuff, you'll probably see a lot of noise and, and things. Or hey, maybe things will go quiet for a few days because when somebody says lawsuit, people tend to zip up soon. Um, but hey, bring on the discovery because uh, if we're dealing with a guy who can't even last 24 hours in the city without having to get coked up, <laughs> I'm going to guess that there's going to be a lot of loose lips that will be sinking a lot of ships here. Oh, I've no doubt. I have no doubt. All right. Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? Yes, we do. Short and sweet and to the point. And unfortunately, the first 26 minutes were broadcasting to no one because I didn't double click the button, which is my fault. And I apologize. But, you know, we'll make up for it tomorrow. But the nobody to who I was broadcasting, great audience. You oh, gave me your full God. attention. <laughs> full attention. Full attention. <laughs> All right. I really got to go. All right, kids and cubs. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. If you want to uh, spread the word, please do. We love it very much. Uh, if you would like to not make miss an episode, make like the Ray Girl and go to our pod page, podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with I in between each one of those words. Subscribe when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it comes directly to you. If you want us to support us in other ways, make like Kit Elaine and go to our True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube page and click like, share, and subscribe. Make us happy. Lick, click, and flick our buttons. Yes. And if you'd like to help us in other ways, please scan the QR code that is going to appear by Mr. Grizzly's head to replace the one that's there, which brings us to our YouTube page. And this one will bring you to our coffee page. Coffee, ko fi.com slash eager beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. And there you can make a contribution to the emergency hydration fund. And I just see, hey, Patty. Hi, Dan's mom. Lovely to see you. Thank you so much for joining in. Good morning to you. Ah, so lovely. She's a wonderful person. Um, so please, if you would like to uh, make a donation there and help us, we would really, really, really appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Uh, remember, uh, democracy is something that you do. So please, if you are in uh, New Brunswick, Saskatchewan, or British Columbia, try to get involved in the upcoming provincial elections. We need you either working a polling station or helping your preferred candidate uh, get to a seat. Um, I think that's everything. They're a little bit out of order, but let's just keep on going. Kits, it's a tough world out there. <sighs> really, it is. So please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, some words of wisdom. Yeah, um, try and keep your head above water today and smile at everyone you see. It will give more back to you than you take from, than, than it gives. Wow, let's try that again. When you smile at somebody, it gifts them with an uplift in their spirits and it when will give you smiling, more when you see them smile back. When you're smiling, well, I mean, the whole it, world what it boils down to you. is the most selfish thing you can do is to give. Because guess what? You get back 10 times what you've given out. Absolutely. I see that Mateo is watching. So hello, Mateo. How are you? Hey, big kisses, big hugs. All right, kids and cubs, have a beaverific day. Be kind to and gentle with yourselves. It's going we'll to be a you. wild one. Okay, take care. Bye. <laughs> you are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music.